Hello guys and welcome. Today I want to talk about some really interesting topic which might become even more interesting as we're experiencing certain environmental changes and negative effects of uh, the global warming. Uh, due to advancements in science and in building technologies we can make previously thought inhospitable places livable. And it's not just Arctic or uh, Antarctic or Mars or Moon. It's um, our water surface and it's our oceans and uh, we can both build floating cities and underwater cities. And those cities can be both scalable and completely self-sufficient. On top of that, uh, the technologies that exist can allow them to become zero waste and zero uh, carbon dioxide as well. So those are probably the cities of the future and the technologies that they're going to use are called blue technologies on most of the projects but um, i mean of course they can be applied to the cities that have built on surface but what makes them more appealing is that there'll be extremely resistance to all kinds of storms and the uh, rays of the sea levels and anything that can come uh, along with global warming because um, as environmentalists predicted we might have certain changes to the climates and certain changes to wind and water currents and uh, some of the environmental changes will be unpredictable and those cities will be resistance to anything that might come along so i will outline several most promising cities that are probably going to be built in the nearest future the first project that is patronized by the united nations is oceanic city it can potentially house up to 10,000 people on a 75 hectare territory if not more. Uh, with the ability to grow from 2 hectares and 300 residents, it can expand uh, to the tremendous size. Uh, thus, it is both scalable and suitable for most locations. It is also filled with blue technologies that are environmentally friendly, non-destructive and quite sustainable. They can meet humanity's shelter, energy, water and food needs without harming the marine ecosystem. The city is designed to grow and transform over time gradually, evolving from neighborhoods into cities. Such uh, cities will be comprised of modular neighborhoods, with each consisting of the previously mentioned 2 hectare cells, utilizing uh, the available space for living, working and any kind of social gatherings. All of the structures here will be below 7 stories in height for the purpose of maintaining a low center of gravity and resisting strong winds. Each building will be fanning out to self-shade internal public space, providing comfort and cooling at the lowest cost possible, coupled with maximizing the roof area for the solar energy capture. All of such cells will have communal farming at their heart, allowing the residents to enjoy the zero-waste system. Social, recreational and commercial facilities are placed around the shelter dinner ring to encourage the citizens to gather and move around the city, uh, with residents being able to easily walk or boat through the city. An important feature of such settlements is its ability to use the local resources for the construction purposes, such as the fast-growing bamboo that is six times the tensile strength of steel, and it's much cheaper than the conventional wood, of course. This on top of it being constructed on shore, reducing the cost even further. The settlements will have a large number of farms, both indoors and outdoors, along with greenhouses where large amounts of food can be grown, as well as fish farms. All of this will provide all of the necessary nutrition for the settlers. The transportation will be realized through a multitude of docking stations, making ships extremely commonplace type of public transportation, along with electric cars, uh, buses, bicycles, and even hydrofoil bicycles that can ride you on water. However, there is an even larger project developed by the Japanese corporation called Shimizu, and it will become reality rather sooner than all the other projects listed in this video. It is probably my favorite due to its unique design solutions and humongous potential to harvest resources from deep sea. It has both uh, humongous uh, potential in terms of development and humongous practical application to go along with it. It has a layered structure that goes deep underwater and fills a variety of functions. At the top there is a large blue garden and a humongous globe, 500 meters in diameter, that is a greenhouse with a large amount of natural sunlight going through its glass cover. It is also 
a central space for a leisure zone and a sort of an aquarium uh, whereas the underwater life that surrounds the station can be observed. On top of that, the orb shape neutralizes all the water pressures that comes to it. Each of its sections is connected with a deep sea gondola that goes along the infraspiral and can transport uh, both people and resources from this top sphere all the way to the bottom deep sea station. What really captivates me about the station is its resistance to storms since it is mainly underwater and is equipped with three super ballast bolts that will regulate its submerging whenever the weather on the surface becomes unfriendly. Together with that, there will be a large deep sea station, possibly branching out into several more units on the bottom of the ocean. All of it will enable us to tap into the resources at the bottom of the oceans like never before, including all of the precious metals and other available substances that can be found down there. The Earth factory can be situated as deep as 3,000 to 4,000 meters below the water surface in a deep sea zone, also being able to both store and reuse CO2 using the industrial emissions, as well as develop and cultivate deep sea resources. This has several additional aspects to it that will be vital for the sustainability of the entire station. Electricity through the power generation using the thermal energy conversion through the temperature differentials. Uh, on the surface and deep in the sea, food through the plant cultivation using the deep sea water, fresh water distillation using the water pressure. So as you can see, the station will be completely sustainable and it will generate even more resources that will be to, able to send to other stations or to onshore facilities. A really fascinating project with a unique architectural style and approach is the Lilypad floating city. The shape of it is inspired by the highly ribbed leaf of Victoria water lilies, with the double skin of the floating acropolis being made of polyester fibers, covered by a layer of titanium dioxide uh, that would react with uh, the ultraviolet rays and absorb the atmospheric pollution via a photocatalytic effect. Three marines and three mountains would surround a centrally located underwater artificial lagoon with the three mountains dedicated to work, shopping and entertainment, all coupled with uh, suspended gardens and aquaculture farms located below the water line that are used to grow food and biomass. All of this coupled with renewable energy technologies, including solar, thermal, wind, tidal and biomass to produce more energy than it consumes. Those lily pads can be located close to land or even set on the ocean currents to move from one location to another. Another really interesting concept is the Green Float, a carbon-negative ocean city. It is also designed by Shimizu Corporation, along with a super collaborative graduate school and Nomura Securities. They are researching the technical issue involved in constructing the Green Float concept, a self-sufficient carbon-negative floating city that would reside in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Similarly to the first project that was mentioned, it will comprise of separate floating neighborhoods or cells resembling lilies. Those would come together to form a compact village capable of housing 10,000 to 50,000 people. And if those are then put together, they can form cities of 100,000 people or even more, with most of the people living in the one kilometer high city in the sky towers in the center of those circular cells. Additional waterside residential zones comprising the low-rise townhouses will be located on the outer edge of the structure's outer circumference, taking advantage of the cooler temperatures, as the tower residence and services would be located at the top of the tower, at an elevation of 700 meters, or 2,296 feet, providing year-round year temperatures of 26 to 28 degrees, which is pretty warm summer weather. And as the population of cities will grow, additional cells could be added to expand the already existing polis. With Central Tower being surrounded by grasslands and forests and circumference adjoining marine forests, lagoons and beach resorts. So it would be quite a marvelous, marvelous sight to behold and it will be very green and beautiful actually. Those cells are designed to be completely self-sufficient in terms of food and one kilometer high towers containing a plant factory, while the livestock and other farming would take place in the plains that are surrounding those towers. Those cities would 
use a number of technologies to nullify their com carbon imprint. So that's why it's carbon negative. Um, it's a compact form of the city by itself with a low 40% uh, reduction in CO2 through more efficient transportation, increased thermal insulation, uh, facility efficiency, and other advanced technology would give another 30% reduction. The last 30% would be reduced by the solar power provided by the space satellites, ocean thermal energy conversion, coupled with wind and wave technologies. All of this would be coupled with recycling and converting waste into energy to produce zero waste. On top of that, it would help with cleaning up the oceans by collecting the passing garbage islands for use as energy resources. So, on top of being carbon negative, it recycles everything and it will recycle all of the abundant, I must say, uh, ocean pollution that is so prevalent in our oceans right now. So, those islands will be located at the equator in the areas that is less prone to typhoons, uh, storms, and other environmental hazards. But it would still have an emergency mechanism in case it would get hit by some large waves or something like that. It also be the strong elastic membranes attached to the lagoons around the outer circumference of the cells, going up to 10 meters or 32 feet in height. In addition to this, there would be 20 to 30 meter high seawalls capable of handling any kind of worst case scenario. The current goal is to launch the station as soon as 2025 and I hope it works out and they'll get it as early as possible. It would be great. Another project that should be taking shape in the near future is being created by Seasteading Institute in San Francisco. Maybe some of you who are more interested in this topic have heard about it. Um, it is supposed to include hotels, restaurants, and power plants with sufficient clean water and other resources to be self-sustainable. From what is known about it, it faces several considerable engineering challenges and requires a considerable investment to become a real reality. It has reached an agreement with French Polynesian government and are currently working on the presentation of its viability. However, they will have to put considerable work and effort by the looks of it to make it a reality. Overall, there are other interesting concepts that I haven't mentioned and that can as well become the reality. We will most likely see how such projects will shape themselves as they may become more important as we experience more effects of climate change and, of course, global warming. There have been some predictions of the cities at the oceans, um, as the ocean lines that will be affected the most but uh, we will have to see exactly how it develops in its entirety but having several possibilities to mitigate the adverse climate effects is what we will definitely need to overcome um, any possible perils uh, that uh, environmental change might pose to us as a humanity and whole the projects also are interesting as an example of how previously unhospitable environments can be inhabited Particularly if we look at them in terms of scalability, they can definitely grow into larger cities and we would most likely see them reach the ocean depths in some of its parts. Even if those will be remote stations integrated into a larger oceanic megapolis or a network of cities even. We could definitely have those cities layered into different parts, with only the top being on the surface. This would make a lot of sense for dealing with all kinds of storms and that can possibly occur on the water surface. So, for example, we might decide to have a living quarters below the water surface and have humongous gardens on top and the deep uh, sea mining station at the bottom and recreational spaces with humongous farms that would be integrated into larger automated, probably automated, plant growing systems on top. So, as, as it develops and as we see several different projects, we will probably see it shape up uh, into the final stage that will be most efficient and um, most resource effective mode of those cities. So they will be um, not just urban centers, uh, they will be um, not just production facilities, they'll have uh, humongous um, gardens, humongous parks and uh, living zones if they are developed properly. So they'll be extremely green and uh, they can uh, effectively farm the marine life, not the way it's being farmed right now, where it's uh, threatening to certain species. 
and hopefully it will become extremely sustainable and self-sufficient so it won't be producing any kind of pollution and it will completely sustain itself on its own resources to a smaller or a greater degree uh, therefore uh, once such projects are developed to their largest capacities they'll be truly marvels of human engineering and a testament to human ingenuity Thank you for watching the video, I really hope that you enjoyed it, if so, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. You can read my entire article on the subject by following a link below.